Hi guys, I'm Melissa from cladmom.com. This is month 27 with your toddler. By this age, most toddlers are saying 50 to 100 words, increasingly uttering phrases of two or more words, blabbering a lot. Your toddler might be having difficulty saying certain sounds such as TH, L, and S. This is perfectly normal and you shouldn't expect yourself to understand all of the blabbering. Where is it far? Stick to the same language rich activities, incorporating them into your everyday life with your child. Can you say name, Bracey? This past month, I tried something new having a conversation with Bracey. Toddlers have a sort of funny perspective because, unlike us, they don't necessarily converse about something that happened long ago or in the recent past. It's not like they're going to tell you when they get home, oh, mommy, you know, I just went to the park. And when I was at the park, I went up and down the slide. They're not able to sort of communicate in that way, nor to digest their experience in that way. The other day, I had the experience of talking to Bracey on the phone. And so what I decided to do, rather than just, you know, say, hi, Bracey, in order to try to have a little bit more of a substantive conversation, was talk to him about one of the favorite books that we read, which happens to be a Curious George book. And I said something like this, you know, Bracey, George was hired as a window washer and he went up and started washing all the windows. But it was so funny because he looked into one of the windows and there was a baby crying there because that baby didn't want to eat his spinach. Do you remember that, Bracey? Wasn't that funny? And then I said, Bracey, did you like it? Yesterday when we went to the park and you got to kick the ball and then you got to go down the slide and then we went on the swing set. Wasn't that fun? I can't wait to go back to the park with you. Now, I don't know if I would call this a conversation because he wasn't actually like answering back, but that was a way to describe a recent experience with Bracey or two rather, one in the case of the book that we shared reading together and another one in the case of the park that we'd gone to. Try doing this with your child. Try speaking with your child about experiences that you have had together, and that is a good way for them to realize the extent to which language can essentially encapsulate our experience. Your 27-month-old should be getting increasingly agile in their physical activities. They should be able to run or walk while holding a ball. They should be getting stronger at climbing onto and off of the sofa at home or chairs. In the park, they should be getting better going down the slide, maybe at even climbing up the slide, at climbing up the jungle gym. They should be getting better also at pushing themselves around with a toddler bike. Encourage your toddler to do the following. Walk and run while holding a ball. Balance on one foot. Leap forward two feet at a time. Graduate to a bigger tricycle with real rubber wheels, which allows your toddler to push themselves forward with their feet on the ground. Climb up and down the stairs with arms stretched out. Climb onto and off of the jungle gym. Go down the slide and even better, climb up the slide, which is much more difficult for the arms and legs. Push up and down with another child on a seesaw. Use plastic pins, stuffed animals, or block towers and create a bowling lane in your house. Allow your toddler to take the books down from the shelves to their heart's content. Your toddler should be getting more adept at playing with blocks, trains, and other manipulatives. Paintbrushes, crayons, and markers will encourage your toddler's fine motor skills while giving them a sense of creativity and ownership. Here are some intellectual activities for a 27-month-old toddler that encourage fine motor skills. Scribbling. Jackson Pollock, anyone? Drawing lines over dotted lines, a straight line, a square, a circle, or a rectangle. Cutting paper with scissors while carefully holding the paper far away with the other hand. Turning pages of a paper book, which is trickier than a board book. Building a block tower higher and higher while talking about the colors, numbers, and shapes. Practicing beading with large wooden beads and a string. Forming Play-Doh balls, drawing circles around them. Painting dots in different colors, then mix the dots to see the new colors. Card games, there are some fun ones for toddlers. Drawing with oversized toddler crayons, which encourages the pincer grasp. Should I encourage my toddler to apologize? Some adults think that it's a bad habit to teach a toddler to essentially say something that they don't mean, something that's inauthentic. 
They think that we should be teaching children to always speak what is their authentic thoughts or feelings. Other people, however, including me, see it as being imperative that a toddler takes responsibility for their actions and recognizes the feelings and experiences of other people. So this is a very personal decision. I will say in my house that I tend never to force Bracey to physically do anything. But if something happens, like he hits or he does something you know, mean or he bites even, which has happened a couple times, I really try to mark the moment. I try to stop whatever we're doing, take him away, give him time to calm down. And then I do try to get him to say he's sorry. It doesn't always work. It's kind of funny now because something will happen with the ball and he's like, sorry, ball. So that's sort of funny. His older sisters try to get him to give a kiss. So that sometimes works for them. You have to sort of play it by ear and see what works for you in the situation. You're never going to get an apology or a makeup kiss or anything like that when your toddler is in the heat of the moment and still angry. So you definitely want to allow them to calm down. Whatever you decide to do, I hope you will go the route of encouraging your toddler to take some responsibility for their actions because this is a very important step towards building empathy. When should I begin potty training? A lot of experts recommend starting to potty train between 27 and 33 months. When your toddler is old enough and mature enough to start potty training, but not so old that they could become resistant to the idea. So that is the general guideline. I will say with my boys that when I tried to potty train them before the age of three, I had very little luck with it and didn't really get very far along. And it was right around three when I just took off the diapers dramatically and told myself, we're going to do this now, you know, come blank and high water. And we actually got there much more quickly. My girls potty trained a bit earlier at around two and a half. That also had to do with the fact that they were winter babies. What should my 27 month old be eating? Continue to give your toddler an extensive variety of foods from the four food groups. A toddler's serving size is about one fourth to one half that of an adult. Here's a quick breakdown of the quantities that you need per food group. Grains, six servings. This includes bread, pasta, rice, crackers, and cereals. Opt for whole grains. Vegetables, two to three servings. Opt for fresh, not canned or frozen veggies. Try for one serving at lunch, one with snack, and one with dinner. Fruits, two to three servings. Opt for fresh, not canned or frozen fruits. Dairy, two to three servings. Try yogurt, kefir, cheese, and milk. Protein, four servings. Meat, fish, chicken, lean pork, eggs, and legumes. Lentils, split peas, navy beans, and fava beans. Hummus is terrific. Dairy products also have great protein. How much milk should a 27-month-old drink? By this age, most doctors suggest switching to low-fat milk and dairy products. This will depend on your child's weight. Children aged 1 to 3 years require 700 milligrams of calcium per day and 600 IUs of vitamin D, which helps aid calcium. Give your toddler around 2 8-ounce glasses of milk per day, but no more than 24 ounces, so that the milk does not affect their appetite. If you are giving more dairy products as snacks like cheese and yogurt, you can give less milk, and the same holds true if you continue to breastfeed. Check with your doctor as to the exact amounts. Your 27-month-old toddler will need around 12.5 to 14 hours of sleep, which likely will be divided into 11 to 12 hours at night of sleep and a nap of around 1.5 to 3 hours. Gracie sleeps around 10 hours at night and takes a nap of around two hours, so we're pretty lucky. He is sleeping a little bit less than he was in prior months. I'm going to put out a schedule now. It's the same one I've been using for a couple months. This is a loose framework to get you in the habit of thinking about regular meals, at least three, regular snacks, at least two, a nap during the day, and getting your baby down to bed for sleep not too late. 7 a.m. feed and breakfast. 10 a.m. snack, 12 p.m. feed and lunch, and aim for a nap from 1 to 3 p.m. 3 p.m. feed and snack, 6.30 p.m. dinner, 7.30 p.m. a final milk feeding, and 8 p.m. bedtime. If you're no longer breastfeeding, give milk or its equivalent after the meal. The average weight for a 27-month-old toddler is 29 pounds for boys, which is 13.2 kilos, and 27.8 pounds, 
which is 12.6 kilos for girls. How tall is the average 27 month old toddler? The average height for a 27 month old toddler is 35.1 inches, which is 89 centimeters for boys and 34.6 inches, which is 88 centimeters for girls. Gracie had an amazing 27th month. The highlight of the month was learning how to ski and he even managed to make it down the slope for little bits and pieces of time on his own. We were so proud of him. He also really enjoyed the holidays and having his older brother Headley home again. Christmas brought some great family time. Thanks so much for watching and see you back next month for month 28.